And that being said, we're going to go into game number two right now between KDY and Coca. Coca is up 1-0, and are you ready to kick it off? Yes, let's go ahead uh, on Ohana. Now, guys, uh, the games were played an hour ago. That's right. So we, we, we do recognize this from replays, but, of course, this is as fresh as fresh can be. And uh, we always like to emphasize that because this is the closest we can in terms of getting the, the tournament in terms of respectable hours. There are some Europeans who stay up really late to play in these qualifiers. We don't want to keep it on too long. And that's also why we break down the tournament because it's a weekly cup. It's $1,000. We don't want people to, <coughs> to kind of grind it out and be really tired by the end games and as a result lose their stamina. Yep. And, you know, obviously you need very different skill sets to... Um, do like a marathon tournament. Yeah, like the, tournament. the 20 games a exactly, day. Exactly, like, like MLG and <laughs> the one at a time. And NASL, we are a one match a week. You want We want players to actually prepare for their matches coming up. So this is it going to resemble the style that we have in the North American Tour League as close as possible, I think. That's right. So let's go ahead and introduce our players. Starting in the top left, we have a red Zerg player under the ID Mavengeance. His true ID is called Slayer's Coca. He's a Korean player now playing as one of the main Zergs in Team Slayers, along with people like Min. Uh, really good. He all killed Prime in GSTL Season 2 not too long ago, about a month and a half ago, Andre. It was very important to watch, or very cool to watch, because Coke is really important to the team. But in the bottom right, we have KDY, this up-and-coming Zerg player from Korea as well, who for now is faceless because he hasn't had much time or opportunity to prove himself. And now this is his this is his, this is his platform. He needs to yeah. make a name for himself. And what better way than to upset his teammate and saying, "I'm the better Zerg player on Slayers." <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't help that he's down one That's zero right. one right now. Of course, Coca is, as you were saying, the more esteemed, more renowned player. But KDY definitely showing that he loves greed in that first game. I mean, he really made a statement. I think by being so. Economically aggressive. Normally, we don't see that coming out from players in their first game, but he was just like, I'm not defending against any all ins. I'm just going to say, hey, yeah, Zergling Baneling, we're going to trade scouting information. I'm going to deny you as much as possible. Let me get my third base. And on Daybreak, it's so easy to scout out the third base. So that's what really, really confuses me. Uh, just having an Overlord in that third base location, it will give a trigger to a lot of players to say, hey, I should attack right now. Of course, we had a premeditated attack last. Last time, we'll see what Koka actually does here, uh, if he all-ins or if he just plays it absolutely safe. That's right, and I, I, w I would like to think that the previous uh, timing attack in game number one on Daybreak was a formulated attack based off his scouting information. He saw the saturation, he saw a lot of his gas timings as well. And I think Koka said, you know, he should be very vulnerable. That's something that Koka's really good in general if you've been watching his games in TSL4 as well. Really able to pick his opponent apart based off his scouting intel. And it's really difficult because a lot of Zergs seem to get fooled nowadays because of how many mind games go into every single matchup, especially ZVZ. The early game seems very coin flippy still because of how safe queens make you. So scouting information is kind of hard to come by. But when you do and you're able to react really well, it's a sign of a great player. Yeah, you know, the early game stages of ZVZ, as you were saying, it does kind of solidify the game in terms of uh, whether or not you're able to defend these Zergling Baneling rushes, which were so prevalent back, uh, maybe even, I would say, six months ago before the, that patch that actually changed the queen range. Uh, but more importantly, it does make it so that a lot of these all-ins, or quote-unquote all-ins, are very economic-focused. So you're actually playing two different extremes. It's like, am I playing against a very economic-centric opening, or am I playing against a super aggressive opening? That's what we normally see these days. It's not, you're not really straddling the middle. And people have taken advantage of that just with the ease of taking out all of these early Zergling scouts. You see uh, Bailing Nest simultaneously, but at the same time, uh, I mean, they have pretty much good information on both players. At this point, defender's advantage is very significant on Ohana just because of how close the queen is to the ramp to the natural expansion as well. You can kind of dodge back and forth and really protect it easily compared to some other maps. So you can probably guess that both of them might be more defensive, but at the same time, I, I would like to see KDY 
try to switch it up a little bit. He's been playing very drone heavy, and you can see he's a little bit more cautious, trying to squeeze out a few more Zerglings. Before, he was making like six, eight Zerglings, and then droning nonstop, and trying to rely on one spine crawler. And now he's starting to scale back a little bit, starting to make a couple of uh, baitlings here and there. But he's taking a more aggressive posture this time. He wants to start making a play, Andre. Yeah, we'll see if he's able to do anything right now. Uh, as the two Banelings have already started. Oh, he might actually pick off this Queen. That'll be so clutch. He targets down the Baneling, and that's going to help quite a bit. But you can see that, no, KDY is not in a great position. He already lost so much. Let's go ahead and take a look. Seven drones. And as you said, Killer said it best. I mean, drones are so powerful in this particular matchup. And I would say the main reason for that is because of the opportunity cost. Remember, it, like, just replacing a drone is actually also hurting your army strength. So that mm -hmm. has to be taken into account as well. Um, I would say Koka is just very, very far ahead in this position. Yeah, it, the, the way you kind of think about the matchup is because Zerg is very, it compounds on itself. When you have more drones, you have stronger economy, and you can pump out more larva because of it, and you're able to cycle through a lot quicker. That's how far you can escalate. That's why sometimes supplies, as something as different as uh, getting an early drone lead, can lead up to 20, 30 supply just like that. And so uh, you have to be very cautious how much you lose. But the good news is that despite all this, he's not too far behind. In fact, he just managed to stabilize in terms of the work account, uh, both coming about to around 42 at this point. So I, I think even though KDY did lose a little bit, he's getting a little bit aggressive as well. Andre going to try to move up the ramp, and he doesn't really get too much damage, but he's going to be able to get some good information. That was pretty clever. What he did there was just try to actually fake a little bit of aggression because it could have been a huge round of units coming in from behind. Of course, the reinforcements. So he actually made a couple of Banelings, or Zerklings. He went in there just to actually get a good scout and try to sell that it is some sort of all-in. Now, it did work in the beginning, but afterwards it didn't. You can see the canceled spine crawler over here. And, and now that Koka has realized what's happened, he's just going to take his third base. And now... Vimpetus is on KDY to actually make a move because this is a really tough situation. The third base is a lot sooner and you've traded so many units in that beginning stage. You really don't have an army advantage, but do you actually just get a, a later third or are you going to try something like uh, taking out this third base and just go for a timing? Yeah, and uh, KDY doesn't even know about this third. In fact, his vision on the map is very limited compared to his opponent and Koka just got a good Overseer scout at the 9 minute mark, which is a pretty standard time as well. So he sees almost everything that his opponent's doing, especially since he sees a delayed third. So Koka knows he has to be a lot more defensive, Andre, especially since there's a slew of upgrades coming for both players. And in the end, I mean, KDY is going to be trying to make a play because he just can't afford to throw down a hatchery and play from behind. That's absolutely right. And Koka knows that he's just going to commit everything into roaches. If he just commits all, both of his hatcheries into roaches, zerglings, banelings, whatever it might be, fighting units, he'll be absolutely solid against any incoming pressure. The minute that a third base goes down, then he can start drumming, droning, knowing his opponent isn't actually going to try to take that aggression. So all the triggers, all the abilities to actually know what his opponent is doing and counter what his opponent is doing is there. And Koka, uh, you know, it's very, very great position for him. Yeah, and you can see that KDY, instead of moving for a third, is getting a third macro hatchery straight in his main. And Koka sees it as well. And usually a macro hatchery with a delayed third, that is just spelling timing attack of all kinds of levels. You just want to up your production as much as possible. Now, again, KDY has been spending a lot of his drones on, or sorry, his larva on drones. Actually, if you look at the worker count, Andre, again, KDY has a significant amount of drones. But that's certainly because he's oversaturated on a lot of bases. And he really would like to get an actual economy based off that, so he may have overdone a little bit. And in fact, he's moving out to take a third base a yeah. lot later than his opponent. Yeah, this is so unfortunate. Kitty Y read that it is going to be some sort of Spire tech, some sort of Muta, as you can see from all the Spore Crawlers, of course, the Defensive Infestors, and just the small amount of Roaches on the field. Of course, it's not now. Yes, he does have a Harvester advantage, but look at that income difference. It's not that much. It's because... 16 workers on each of these mineral lines are only mining half of what they should be. They're mining 20 minerals per minute. So uh. a lot of wasted or inefficient, I should say, inefficient units are being produced over here. And look at this, <gasps> even going ahead and contaminating <laughs> oh his hatchery. No. This is so unfortunate. And let's see if KDY can actually block this. Infestors need to do a little bit of work, but there are just so many roaches here. 
There, there are 44 roaches on the map for Koka and only 16 for KDY. That's going to be incredibly difficult for him to hold off. In fact, Koka can just completely destroy this third and immediately call GG Koka with a great game sense of ZVZ. Again, like you said, KDY read it as a mutable. build. He didn't see the Bailing Nest. He didn't see the Roach Warren. Um, although he didn't, he didn't know Bailings were out. But the idea yeah. is... He didn't understand what was going on, so he played really defensive, played a little bit too safe, and tried to go for a lot of drones. Unfortunately, was not able to. I mean, he was already giving up too much map control, and that's what goes to show you if you don't scout your opponent. Yeah, I'm, such a tough I'm position. trying to think why he actually read it was going to be some sort of huge spire tech. Uh, the third base kind of told it a little bit, I guess. I'm trying to piece it together in KDY's shoots, but I think maybe the natural, he saw how much was mined from those two gases when he went for that attack. He saw no sign of roaches in Evolution oh. Chamber, so maybe he was like, okay, well, uh, when I'm behind, normally when players are ahead, they're going to go mutas just to take map control and really make it hard for investors to be super powerful at that first uh, sprint. Once they come out, they just don't have enough fungals to deal with mutas out on the map. So maybe that's what his thought process was, but obviously as soon as you misread that, you're dead. You're absolutely yeah. dead. So uh, great. I, it's also good information hiding from Coca as well to keep everything in place. Of course, KDY falling a little bit short, but he can try again next week as well. But for now, Coca advances to the round of 128.